Hey, this is Captain Chris Myers, Central Florida Site Fish and Charters. Today we're going to talk about what I think are the five most important casts that everybody fishing with a spinning rod and reel should know. If you only have one type of cast, you're really limiting yourself in the fish that you can target. So not all fishing situations are the same, and you never know what, what opportunities you might come across, and it would be a shame not to be able to make a cast that could catch you the fish of a lifetime. The first cast we're going to cover is the overhand cast. Just about everybody knows an overhand cast. It's the one that I see pe most people make when they come fishing with me. But there's a lot of variations of it and some are much more effective than others. The first thing I'm going to recommend is that for the majority of your cast, we'll cover and, and go over it if it's not necessary, but for just about all our cast, two hands going to work better than one. In this cast, I'm gonna come just barely past 12 o'clock as I wind up. So the rod tip is not is still pointing up in the air. Left hand, if you're a right-handed caster, the left hand's at the bottom of the rod. Right hand stays on the reel. If we let that thing go in a straight line or just a very slight arc. It's very good for super straight line accuracy and is great for lots of distance. The variation that I commonly see in that cast is to wind up much too far, say back here at the three or four o'clock position. Now people have a tendency to catch things in the boat, catch the ground behind them, and it's very common to see the lure go way up high in the sky in this cast, and it goes around in a huge rainbow arc, lands like a cannonball, and it's very hard to control your accuracy and you're not getting very much distance if the energy is wasted going up around in a curve. So this cast is one that I would never make and would never recommend. This is the cast that we want to work with. And if you're finding yourself with your rod flat, tip it up a little more, you'll find you'll cast at a much straighter line with a lot more accuracy. The final thing we want to keep in mind when we're making this cast, and most of our cast, is to not let go with the hand holding the reel. So I make this cast and I wind up to here and I let it go this way. And if you start watching other anglers, if you're not doing that, you'll definitely see people doing that. Now I have no control over the amount of line coming off my spool. I can't close the bail, I can't set the hook, and I'm going to miss fish and miss and get wind knots and not be able to set the hook. Never ever let go with the hand that's holding the reel. We only let go with our opposite hand. The next cast would be a sidearm cast. It's something I use all the time. It makes a much lower profile, casting lower to the water. Fish cannot see my rod waving around up here as much, and the lure lands a lot softer. The only difference between my overhead cast, which is here, the sidearm cast here, if you notice, right hand, left hand are staying in the same position. I'm just straightening out my elbow, more or less. The rod comes lower to the water. I can cast anywhere throughout this range of motion that I want. I can cast here, cast sidearm, here, here, anywhere. It's the same motion. The bottom hand pulls the tip around. The butt of the rod goes up towards your forearm. It will make any, you can make a cast from any of those angles you have to practice letting that line go at exactly the right moment, just like we do with the overhand cast. So in a sidearm cast, my lure is going much farther left than I wanted it to. I'm holding on to the line, my finger too long. If it goes farther to the right, you're letting it go too early. So it takes a little practice, just like a lot of other things we do. When you want to get it work just right, you have to practice some trial and error. Once you get that letting that finger go at the right moment, it's a much more subtle cast, very, very accurate, great for sight fishing situations. Hand in hand with that sidearm cast is my backhand cast. I use it all the time if I'm on the boat with another person. I don't want to have to be casting over here across their face all day, hit it, worry about hitting them with my rod or hook. I want to keep my lure outside the boat. Again, I have between two and three feet of line. For a little short cast next to the boat, I can just flick it one-handed. You want to get out a little bit farther, a little more accuracy. We're going to use two hands. Again, I got it on the bottom here. 
Now I'm pulling it back towards my forearm in this manner, or we can roll our hands over in this manner and throw out kind of like you would throw a Frisbee. And then my tip would be my butt of the rod would start at my wrist and I'd be pulling it away a little to generate some power. You can make some very long backhand casts if you start in this position and make a Frisbee throwing motion with a long cast that starts low and ends high go a very long, long way. You don't have to worry about hitting anything or anybody on this side of you. Another situation where I use the backhand cast often is when I'm in a boat by myself, but all my targets are on my right hand side. So instead of me having to turn my body over here and then cast across my boat, worry about hooking the steering wheel, the depth finder, uh, other rods, other people, I don't want to be bringing my rod across my boat all day casting. If I'm casting to my right hand side, a little backhand cast goes, keeps that lure and the tip of that rod outside the boat, less accidents happen, and it's just as effective once you practice it a little. This next cast I'm going to talk about, the pitch cast I'm using for short to medium range casts, very soft presentations, and very, very accurate. So if I'm trying not to scare fish and I need that lure to barely make a plop in the water, they're very close, I don't want to be making a lot of movement, I'm using this cast where the lure is going to be farther than three feet, at least halfway or down to your reel. And I'm using that when I see fish and I just want to make a little flip to them, it barely makes a plop when it lands. I use it to get up along shorelines. You can use it to put in beds, bedding fish casting up against stumps, up against lily pads, up against the edges of docks, wherever you need to get where you're relatively close, you need a very accurate and a cast that lands exactly where you want. To get this cast started, get about the length of your reel from your tip of your rod to your reel, and we're gonna swing this lure back and forth like a pendulum. So for practice purposes, just get used to swinging it I'm going to swing it right back towards the blank of my rod. It should be coming right back towards me and just barely on either side. And I'm going to let this lure go. It comes back and as it gets to the bottom, I'm going to let it go and it'll continue traveling straight. It should be just above the water. We're not going to make this cast up high. And the key to this cast is it goes straight and level to the surface of the water. It does not swing up, come up in a big arc and come down with a huge plop. That's not very subtle, not very accurate, it kind of defeats the purpose of what we're trying to achieve. So with one swing, it'll land nice and soft. If you need a little more distance, here's the little trick that takes a, a bit of practice. As this thing, as I'm letting my finger off, I'm giving it just a very subtle lift and flick. Very, very subtle. If you do it hard, the lure is going to flip way up in the sky, so you can barely even see that. Once more, we're going to swing it in, then flip. The tip is going out and up. You'll get quite a bit more distance on it if you need to stay a little bit farther away from your target. A cast that every angler coming sight fishing should have. Lots of fish show up very close to the boat and there is absolutely no way for you to wind up here if you're the overhand only caster and cast to those fish that are within 20, 30 feet of that boat. That thing comes down so hard and so loud it scares every fish away. No matter what kind of fishing we're doing, if we're making huge plops in the water, unless there's a feeding frenzy going on, you're gonna scare those fish away. A sidearm cast can do it. For the a little bit longer cast, but for the very short cast, this little flip cast, super accurate. You can target fish that are only a couple feet away from you or your boat. The final cast we're going to cover is the skip cast. This cast I would use to get up underneath docks, up underneath overhanging trees, or you can use it in open water if you just want to create some additional fish attracting sound because it sounds like a bait fish running away skipping across the surface. This cast I'm going to use a lot less line, about a foot or so, 
and I'm going to use the tip of this rod as an extension of my hand, and I'm going to do exactly what I would do if I was trying to skip a stone. My hand would be low to the water, and it would throw parallel to the water. My tip needs to be parallel to the water, and it needs to travel parallel to the water. So just the same basic motion we're using for the sidearm, except we're going to have that tip now pointed down, so we're not at sidearm anymore for the most part. The tip is pointing down, and we're going to let it go across the surface of the water. Now, the shorter the cast you need to make, the sooner you can hit next to you. If I needed to skip quite a ways away, my first point of impact would be quite a bit farther out, but you can get a lot of, a lot of skips. Sometimes it only skips two or three. Sometimes you get 10 or 12 little skips across the surface. Some lures weren't designed for skipping at all. Some skip better than others. So a, a lure like this DOA Cal shad tail with a jig head, great skipping lure. If you get a spinner bait, it's not going to skip, but it's not something that was really designed to skip a whole lot. Then a little trick that will help you is to give your rod a little half circle, get that rod loaded or bent with very little effort, that thing will skip right up to your target. Great for skipping up to shorelines where you don't wanna to have to try to aim and land exactly on the shore. It's very hard to make a cast that lands within inches of that shore, but I can start skipping five, 10 feet away from that shoreline and I can let it skip right up to the shore and because I'm using my finger, I can stop that exactly when I want it to and it only goes as far as I let it go. So a skip cast, is something that you want to have in your arsenal if you're fishing around any kind of structure and you want to control exactly where that stops and add yourself some sound attracting advantages. So in a lot of types of fishing, casting can be the most important thing. We could have the greatest bait or lure if we cannot put it where it needs to be. It doesn't matter how great it is. So work on your casting, develop different types of casts so that no matter what situation you find yourself in, you can take advantage of it and make a more effective and more accurate cast. So thanks for tuning in today. Please become a subscriber if you already have not subscribed to this channel. If you're gonna be in Central Florida area, you can come see me for a saltwater inshore fishing charter. And if you have any questions or ideas for new videos, put them in the comments below. I try to answer all of your questions.